The first weekend in February is upon us, and so is some Atlantic 10 basketball. The Patriots of George Mason play host to the Explorers from LaSalle. It's a primetime matchup right now on Masson. Fans all revved up here at Eagle Bank Arena. Why not? Homecoming weekend piled into the place to root on the Patriots tonight as they're matched up against the LaSalle Explorers in the Atlantic 10. Currently in conference play, log jab at the top. Both of these teams in the top eight looking to put heat on the leaders in the second half of the conference at the college level. Cleon Roberts, this is his first start this season, but he himself at LaSalle 12 and 8 this year four years ago inspiring run for the Explorers to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament they had a white hot start in league play five and one then a three game slide included non-conference loss to Philly rival Penn but got the win against UMass 54 second half points in a round to an 88 78 win you've got number one team in scoring in three-point shooting, free throw percentage in LaSalle against the George Mason team. It's trying to continue to grow. The officiating crew tonight will see if Mason can slow things down against this high-scoring Explorer squad. And both of these teams are normally man-to-man -man teams, but you may see a lot of zone and you see a lot of jump shots by this kid, Cleon Roberts, who is one of the best three-point shooters in the A-10. Uh, he's number one in three-point shooting percentage, close to 50%, his 31st triple of the year, knocks it down. This LaSalle team shoots 38% from three as a squad. Jalen Jenkins in the paint. He's got a team that takes a lot of threes and a team that scores a lot of twos in Mason. And Giannini talked about that when we talked to him at the shoot around today. He said this team is not going to take an awful lot of three point shots. They got a bunch of guys that can really drive the ball to the basket. They can make threes, but they don't take a whole lot of it. From the corner, Lamar Stooks makes it back-to-back -back goals out of the gate for LaSalle. And Stooks is not known for that three-point shot, but I watched him in the pregame, and he definitely has a nice touch. More of a two-point shooter than a three-point shooter. Just his fifth made three of the year at 12 against UMass, scoring more of late. Morrell on the baseline, kicks it out. Jair Grayer not able to knock it down from Mason. Last touch by Jenkins. It belongs to LaSalle. And Grayer is one of their best three-point shooters at 6'5". He's able to shoot the ball over top of the defense, particularly if you show zone. And that's one of the things that's tough about LaSalle is they got Roberts, who's 6'6", and Price, who's 6'5". And if you don't get all the way out on them, they're going to be able to shoot over top of these Mason guards. First two possessions, Mason is in a matchup. They're in a man right now. LaSalle looking to get the ball inside to Washington. Demetrius Henry leaves off for Price. He'll pull up. He's got another. And he is an all-day shooter. He has not seen a shot that he does not like. He'll take some bad ones, and he can make bad shots, too. Excellent shooter. Leading scorer last year, and he's their second leading scorer. B.J. Johnson, who we have not talked a lot about. Speaking of scores, Otis Livingston scoring at a very high rate, knocking down that three he has been shooting it wonderfully from distance of late. Five of seven triples in that double overtime affair at St. Louis last time out. And able to hit the first triple of the night for the Patriots. A team that only hits about five and a half per game from beyond the arc. Last in the A-10. Certainly they can do damage in the paint. Stoops keeps it going. Roberts can't continue the opening run of threes. Maybe Price can. And that one's well up. Moore, senior from Queens in New York City. Again, season low, seven points, limited by flu-like symptoms. Justin Pyre dealing with that tonight and a travel offensively on Mason. Jair Greer penetrated, looking to pitch the ball to Livingston on that play, and before he could get the ball out of his hands, it took an extra step. Greer, I think, thought he got hit on the wrist before the referee called travel, too. 9-5 here for LaSalle. Tony Washington with a touch. In with B.J. Johnson unable to go tonight. Foot in a boot, hurt in practice, much like Pookie Powell was a couple of weeks ago for LaSalle. Scores working with a little bit bigger lineup 
And it's Stukes going strong. The and one terrific feed from Tony Washington. Double team Tony Washington. He recognized the double team. Someone's got to be open. Stukes makes a really great cut to the basket. Finishes at the rim and a foul on Jalen Jenkins. Excuse me, a foul not on Jalen Jenkins. They called the foul on Otis Livingston on that play number four. That's the first on Livingston. And the other thing about the Explorers, we mentioned the three-point shooting, the overall field goal percentage, 78 percent from the line. And they missed that one. It's a top 10 of the nation. Four of their top scores all shoot over 80 percent, including Stoops. Who's at 82 percent and was over 90 percent in league play before that miss? Clearly the best shooting team in the league, and the Sal's Achilles' heel so far this season has been at this end of the floor on defense. Morrell on the drive, fouled, and he'll shoot two. Cameron Morrell only played 71 minutes all season before tonight, but jumping into that. Starting lineup, a strong move for him. And Dave Paulson telling us at the morning shoot around today that three players are in the midst of serving three game suspensions for a violation of team rules. Kamari Newman, Danny Dixon didn't play against St. Louis the first game of their ban. And after more info came to the coaching staff, Ian Boyd starts his three game suspension tonight for violation of team rules. Coach Paulson saying, look, we love these guys, but it's a privilege to play. Didn't follow the team rules, and they hope it's a teaching moment. But th this leaves a team, Craig, that only plays seven, eight, normally really thin tonight. And Boyd especially. Boyd has played an awful lot of minutes. Very good defender, good rebounder, too. Comes in and spells Marquise Moore, and they're going to definitely miss him. But when they're four and five in the league, every win is important. And so they need to get a good amount of minutes from this guy with the ball, Marquise Moore, Otis Livingston, Jalen Jenkins, and also the, these guys got to stay out of foul trouble. Morrell trying to get it going. That's his specialty. 15 of his 17 field goals last season were threes, and five of the eight this year are triples. Can't hit from distance. Mason still down four. You have two teams operating with a little bit different rotations at a time of the year when most of that stuff is pretty much settled. On the inside, that's Henry going up and foul. Henry made a nice cut from the weak side, and he's so athletic. He just powered through Jalen Jenkins' arm. Jalen Jenkins ends up picking up the foul here. LaSalle up 11 to 7, 15 34 in the first timeout in the first half. Of this kid, Otis Livingston. Question tonight for Livingston and the rest of the Patriots again without some of those normal guys in the rotation pattern. Four Patriots played over 40 minutes in the double overtime game to travel back, getting ready for this one. Going to be a tall ass tonight. And one of those kids got sick, and he was the kid that did not start, Justin Kyer. So you wonder if the number of minutes to travel back and forth to St. Louis could have already had an impact on him. Kyer is on the floor, has the basketball right now. A freshman from Spotswood, Virginia. Troy Tamara on the floor for the first time for Patriots. And Andre Abram, another player that saw more time earlier in his career. Expected to see more tonight. And that's Marquise Moore, not known for the outside shooting, but he'll take it. And he's made one three-point shot all season. That's his second three-point shot. I think his shooting range is just inside that line, but he knocks it down. Big three by Marquise Moore. And averaging a double-double, ninth in the A-10 in scoring, over 17 per game, and a foul. Tamara defending Henry. Sal was almost daring more to take this shot. They double team Otis Livingston and Moore said, okay, if you're going to give me this wide open, I'm going to go ahead and try and knock it down. And he did. <laughs> Putting the guns in the holster there <laughs> after knocking down a rare three. Well, when you're averaging a double double, I think you should be confident. He has every reason to be confident. He's having a great season. And probably feeling better than he was in St. Louis. Told he was sick before the game, during it, and after as well. Roberts. 
Knocks down a skin trickle of the opening half. And that's the fourth three-point shot by LaSalle. And the only two they missed were open three-point shots, too. Clearly, LaSalle very comfortable behind that line. Mason's going to have to do a little bit better job of putting the hand in their face when they're out on the perimeter like that, particularly someone like Roberts who can shoot so well. More. From about the foul line, Abram battling for the board. But they'll get Mason for the push. Yeah, Henry or, or Washington were both attempting to box out tomorrow. Tomorrow kind of moved underneath them, and that was a good call by the official. And Abram looked around saying, I didn't foul, but tomorrow it did. His second, he'll sit, and Jalen Jenkins returning for the Patriots. Yeah, Price and Roberts, Jason, have in the gym range. You've got to get out on both those kids on the perimeter. You can't give them open three point shots. Roberts, we've seen the ability from long range. Now, in amongst the trees on the inside, depositing two more. Explorers by eight. Roberts has that many so far in the game. The foul on the floor against the Explorers trying to defend. It's on. Henry, his first. Richard Jr. from Miami. Started his career at South Carolina. Saul Fury, freshman for the Explorers, expected to see more time without Johnson and Powell tonight. He's on the floor, number 13 in blue. Pull up, Abram. Side rimmed it. And Oops gets to it first. Price, not shot. Why not when you can do that? And again, Dave Paulson calls timeout because he just recognized you got to get all the way out and Price into a driver. He's an excellent three point shooter and he can shoot beyond that three point line, too. That's their sixth, if I'm uh, not mistaken, fifth or sixth three point shot so far. And we still have 13 minutes to go in the first half. Drivers can take away that wide open three point shot, and I'm sure that's what Dave just talked about. And they're so efficient in shooting the three that two guys that combine have over 70 threes on the year are out injured Pookie Powell and BJ Johnson. On the inside, Kyer feeling well enough to make a great cut and lay in two, chance for the three-point play. And this is something that Jalen Jenkins has really worked on and improved. That was a great pass from the top of the key right there. Bounce pass through three defenders. Kyer ended up doing a really good job of finishing at the rim, too, made the play. And he's also going to go to the three-point to the free throw line for a three-point play right there. Knocks it in. It was a great pass by Jalen Jenkins. So Kyer. Again, did not do anything at the afternoon shoot around, was in street clothes. Told at that point, wasn't going to give it a go, but it was summon something tonight. And that's a big trip down the floor for the freshman and the rest of the Patriots. That'll be a travel on Roberts trying to get a jump start on his way to the bucket. And that was a good play by DeAndre Abrams. He took away the three point shot, turned Roberts into a driver, he drive to the basket, and picked up the travel. Good defense by George Mason, that possession. Sophomore from Carrolltown, Texas. B2, just his seventh game of the year. Less than 80 minutes on the campaign before tonight, but opportunity presenting himself. Moore on the inside, count that in the foul. And that was a really nice cut by Marquise Moore, and another great pass by Jalen Jenkins. And that's a tough cut to defend. When you come off the screen right there, go to the basket, the defender's got to get different position right there, and he was behind him that time, and a really nice pass just dropped the ball over top of the defense. Another look at the great play by Moore. Count that in the foul. If there may be blood on the floor, I think that's what they're, they were looking at. The official's at least going to get Things cleaned up there along the baseline. Marquise Moore really turning it on in his senior season for the Patriots. Look at the career numbers. And again, the rebounds, Craig, 6-2, top guard delivering all this throughout his career. It's incredible. And I'll tell you, the other thing it's going to do is all the guards on George Mason's team that are younger than Marquise right now, they can't use the excuse that I'm a guard. 
Dave is going to expect the same kind of production from them when Marquise Moore leaves because he's only 6'2", and they got a couple 6'4 guards in there that I'm sure Dave's saying, look, I got a kid that led the league and rebounded. You guys can rebound, too. We watched LaSalle in its shoot-around earlier today, and John Giannini paid Marquise Moore a great compliment when he talked about his team getting ready to play him. He said, remember, he's the 6'2 monster that gets every <laughs> rebound, and he called him a 6'2 power forward, doesn't shoot threes, gets inside, and gets to the rim. And you just talked about it. He's hard to guard. He really stressed that to his team. Why? If you had a 6'2 power forward 15 years ago, you would have gotten killed every night. No question. What's different? Well, the first thing is, this is a converted point guard. Marquise Moore used to play point guard, so he's capable of handling the ball and getting his own shot. The other thing is teams in college and teams in the NBA are more and more emphasizing the three-point line. If you just look at trends and the number of three-point shots that college teams are taking and professional teams are taking, it's opening up the floor to allow kids like Marquise Moore to get away with playing power forward because there's so many smaller players on the floor, but also what he does well is valuable to a team like George Mason. So the Patriots stringing together six consecutive points. Down five, a little over 12 left to go here first half. Johnny Schuler from the D.C. area out of Roosevelt High School wearing number one for the cell. Gave it up to Stukes, who's called for the travel. And Dukes looked like he was going to pull up and take that three-point shot. Cam Morrell did a good job of running at him, which forced him to be a driver. He puts the ball on the floor, travel, LaSalle. Good defense by George Mason in that position. Patriots tightening up at one end and getting into rhythm at the other end. Offensively, more. Jenkins trying to establish position. Doubled right away in the corner. And the Oars get the turnover. Price. Good defense by Moore and the Patriots to deny the fast break hoop. Mason here at home trailing LaSalle. First half in the Atlanta campus. For tickets and sponsorship info, visit the Patriot Club website on GoMason.com. All proceeds benefit the Mason baseball program, which, as you know, is terrific. And the ties to the Kansas City Royals front office with Drayton Moore, GM, so Mason alums there They're doing their part to help out. You can help out as well. Mason doing its part on the defensive end, stringing together some stops and trying to whittle down this Explorer lead. At one point, was 11. Eight left to shoot. Daniel Raval, redshirt freshman from Portugal, seeing some early time tonight. I don't know how you lose someone that's 6'10 and about 240, but LaSalle had no idea he was under the basket until it was too late. Again, another player getting opportunity for more minutes, just his fourth field goal of the season. Richard last year after a knee injury. Demetrius Henry, baseline attack. And called for the travel. And that's the third travel by LaSalle. Henry didn't like the call. I thought it was a good call. When he, when he came to a jump stop, he moved his pivot foot. Henry, very athletic player, one of the tra many transfers on LaSalle's team, played two years at University of South Carolina and started for them for 31 games. And he's a, he's a talented player. John Giannini able to bring in some transfer talent. Look at the tap activeness from Jair Breyer. Again, LaSalle lost another player there, Jair Greer on the weak side. Most rebounds come on the weak side. Just hanging around, no one anywhere near him. Put the ball back up to two points. Big deep. Roval with the rejection. Moore to the cup. And this is one of the things that Moore does very well, is he's able to push the ball up the floor and finish at the rim with contact. He almost got a foul call on that play right there, John Giannini does not like what he sees and calls timeout. Mason up to not play a whole lot of minutes against St. Louis. Got sick before the game. Ended up starting and playing a lot more in the first half. In the second half, he barely played, if any, minutes. And Coach Paulson was telling us he threw up in the second half and also got sick when they landed, too. So they could have used him against St. Louis. That was a tough loss for them. Five 
early threes for LaSalle, but the turnovers and the shots not falling are going sideways at the moment for the Explorers. Kick to the corner. Livingston will try three. Really Got nice three. pass. And the shot by Livingston. Livingston was set and ready to shoot. And Grayer hit him within rhythm. Livingston had a notion he was going to drive that possession. Offensive foul on Price. Charge taken by Kyer. 15 straight now for the Patriots. Well, the Livingston triple, and then Kyer got to the spot. Morrell stripped. And then committing the personal and going for the loose ball. And you see that a lot in this sport where a kid makes a mistake and ends up compounding the mistake by a second mistake by picking up the foul. Morrell drove to the basket, stripped, and then tries to take the ball back from Stukes and picks up a foul. And cut off just running back to defense. Stukes made a good defensive play. Just go back to defense and pick him up the, at the half court line. Four plus minutes without a bucket for the Explorers. Baseline attack for Isaiah Dees. And contact there. Get Morrell for the bump. And that's his second. And Moore, his break is a short one on the Patriot bench returning to the game. And this is where B.J. Johnson, the loss of him, got to hurt LaSalle a little bit for this game the opportunity to have a more established score, not only from three, but in the post. Price will go down there. Can't get to go. Good defense by Moore and great rebound by Otis Livingston. To the corner for Kyer. Lost the handle. The official saying off the explorer. Henry going to come back in for Price. Oh. Mark Crew at the ready. Glad to have you along from Eagle Bank Arena tonight. Jason at Craig Eshry. Fun one here already in the Atlantic 10 with Sal's 11 point advantage. A distant memory. This is one for the Patriots extended a 15 straight. Roval. Wild turnaround hook. Arrive. And it will belong to the Explorers. Did a good job of rolling to the basket, but when Susie caught the ball and turned around, he lost contact with the rim, and that ball was wide left, Jason. Three on the way from Johnny Schuler, and the deep product feeling good back at his home area, delivering a key triple here for the South. And he, like uh, Cleon Roberts, played an awful lot of minutes last year with the arrival of Pookie Powell. His minutes have been cut, but today, Powell's not playing. B.J. Johnson's not playing. He's got to step up and make shots like he just did right there. Well, Marquise Moore is playing for Mason, and as usual, going strong. He's got free throws in a moment. this juncture of the opening half. And this is the third opportunity George Mason has to get the traditional three-point play when they made layups and got fouled on layups. 60% shooting so far for George Mason, 9 of 15. And the Sal, pretty gaudy too. 50% at 53.3. First free throw is good for Moore. Another way he assists the Patriot Cup. He's in the top 15 in the nation in free throw attempts. He gets there at time. Pretty, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And again, he's athletic. He can drive. Ball handling gets him to the rim, too. He can drive at the half court against a set defense. And he also, as we've seen already, can drive full court when he's got open floor in front of Price, top. All the way, made it look easy. Yeah, that, that was good defense, I thought. Marquise Moore had a hand in his face, cut him off. Price just shut that little fade away off of one foot. And he can make tough shots. At 21, five assists in 36 minutes against UMass midweek. This season on that second team, A-10 selection. Jenkins, baseline attack. Foul on the floor before the shot, and that's Washington trying to defend. Foul. 
the second on Washington. Team foul number seven, so the one and one here for Jalen Jenkins at the strike. Washington will take a seat. And both their big kids, Washington and Henry, have two fouls. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Jenkins hits the front end. Richard Sr. got a Cardinal Hayes in New York City. Double double against LaSalle last season 15 points and 11 rebounds. And when he gets into the scoring mode, that bodes well. For Mason, when he scores 10 or more, Patriots are 9 and 3 this year. 1 and 2, that trip to the line. Three points thus far for Jalen Jenkins. Three on the way. No good for Schuler. Offensive rebound for running the show right Looking now. for a clear out right here, I think Price is. Yevgen Saknia, the junior from Ukraine, getting some time. Kick out three from Dees, no good. Livingston gets it back from Kyer, trying to wheel it inside to Jenkins. Look at that spot, Kyer, great fake, driving, can't hit with a lot. That was a Pass by Jenkins. Bounce past the opposite corner. Big time drive for Isaiah Dees. Freshman out of Coastal Academy in New Jersey, able to tie us up at 28. And John Giannini talked about this kid in the shoot around today, and he, he knew he was going to play a lot more minutes now because BJ Johnson's not going to play today. And he said this kid could give us something. And he scored in bunches in short time. Eight points, 14 minutes against VCU. Big hit from Breyer from the corner. Play was set up by their 6'2 power forward. Marquise Moore penetrated, brought two defenders to him. Breyer in the corner waiting for the pass. Nice pass in rhythm. Breyer knocks down the three. Second on the team in made threes this year. Dees hitting another bucket. Hit the heel of the rim. Livingston, step back. Boy, he's really developed that shot, Craig. No question about it. And that's part of their offense is that screen, that little drag screen on the break right there. Opened him up and wide open three-point shot, and he's got the green light to take it when he has it. Otis Livingston, three of three from long range. Nine points already. Shot. Jenkins, able to save. LaSalle got very lucky that possession. Gray was way too open. Too good of a three point shooter. Didn't hit the rim, so Moore had to take it with his clock winding down and hits it. Demonstrated his post up move there. Got in the lane as far as he could go. Nice little pivot there. Got a little fadeaway jump shot from about 10 feet from the basket. Another surge for the Patriots. Eight straight this time. Excellent turnaround by Amar Stukes. And Stukes is a very good player, becoming a more effective scorer for John Giannini this year. Career high 22 against Rhode Island. Explorers, the threes have dried up, trying to generate points any way they can. Grayer, five in the time. Number five. Hit John Giannini wanted a walk, none there. He's looking for the screen. He'll flash, get stripped. Moore for Livingston. And that was a really play by Livingston. Livingston recognized that Moore was going to take the middle of the floor. Ran very hard to the right side. Moore unselfishly feeded Livingston. Livingston finishes at the rim. Mason up by 10 points, Jason. Now John Giannini worried about taking on George Mason. Uh, the bonus from the bench is big, but Moore and Livingston, two leads. The first three defeats 
UMass down five, and they were able to counter and get the win by 10 to snap that three game slide. But the common theme in a lot of those games, no Pookie Powell, redshirt sophomore, originally from Orlando, Memphis transfer, been terrific. And the best thing he does, assist to turnover ratio, number one in the Atlantic 10. Very good penetrator. Obviously, very small, smart ball handler. Does not make mistakes. Can make three-point shots, too. Both he and B.J. Johnson are a big part of John Giannini's offense, and they need them for the stretch run here. Hopefully, both of them will be healthy by the end of the season. D's on the drive and fouled. And, Craig, in talking with Dr. John this morning, John Giannini, He's really frustrated because both of the injuries to Buki Powell and B.J. Johnson happened in practice. At this time of the year, he normally has sworn off live contact drills to protect players. Powell got hurt when they were trying to get ready to defend the 1-3-1 one -one against Ken. He goes down with an injury. And then George Mason is so good at rebounding the basketball. Number one rebound margin. They had a live box out drill. First seconds of it, Johnson gets hurt. That's got to drive a coach just, nuts. Uh, I'm sure it does, and particularly those two players. And it just sounded like a, 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 a bad batch of bad luck for their team because both those kids are having great years, particularly B.J. Johnson, who's leading the team in scoring in the top 10 in a lot of categories in the Atlantic 10. Yeah, top 10 in the A-10 in points, rebounds, three-point shooting, and free throw shooting. Again, no timetable on returns from those guys. John Giannini hoping that it's back. That's two all-league caliber players, or at least playing like that at this point. And that's a team that started 5-1 and one in yeah, LaSalle is one of the surprises in this league, and I think the team they're playing, George Mason, is another big surprise. Mason was picked to finish 12th in the league. LaSalle was picked to finish 7th. LaSalle, of course, had a couple kids that were sitting out. A couple of their best players were sitting out last year, and so they've, and they've had a major influx of talent with those kids becoming eligible to play after transfer. Funny, John Giannini kicking himself a little bit, but those things are unexpected. He said, that's it. We're not doing anything live the rest of the year. <laughs> You're going to shoot free throws for the rest of the season. Jenkins, I'm going to get this. But he said, if you're not kind of tough and battle ready by this point of the year, you're probably not going to. Yeah, and with, with some of the new rules about being able to practice in the summer and, and practice in the fall, too, there's no sense in going hard this time of the year. And he wasn't trying to go hard. He was running a couple of drills that were going to last about two minutes. And unfortunately, both those kids hurt very early in both of those groups. Yeah. Too many steps. Another traveling call against John Giannini. And we said Dr. John has his Ph.D. in kinesiology with a specialization in sports psychology. One of only two Division I head coaches to doctorates. Moore, boy, he's putting on a dissertation in post play right now. No, the que guard. no question he's going to school against some of the smaller players for the South. 14 for Moore. Quick answer from Demetrius Henry. D1 coach with his doctorate, Brett Reed at Lehigh. These two teams played each other. Pennsylvania rivals. The baseline. Oh, Mason is getting awesome looks right now. And great ball movement, Jason, that possession. I thought Morrell almost had a shot right there, caught the ball, but he recognized Gray was wide open in the corner. Quick pass to Gray in the corner, in rhythm. Grayer knocks it down. Again, LaSalle giving him too much room. Travel again on the Explorers. It's the fifth traveling call on the South, and I guarantee you that John's going to talk about traveling at the half because that's the fifth time they've turned the ball over with the traveling call. Morrell caught that ball. He, when he cut, he recognized Grayer was wide open in the corner. Just a quick touch pass to Grayer, and Grayer knocked down the three point shot. Neeson has hit its last five shots. We talked about the superb shooting stats for the Explorers. The other end of that is Morrell can't hit from. They're at the bottom of the league in a lot of defensive categories. Bluntly, they outscore people. The offense struggles, and sometimes they struggle. And leading the league in scoring, averaging 80 points a game last year and the year before, LaSalle could not shoot the ball well. They definitely were in the bottom in terms of scoring. But this year, again, 
with a bunch of those kids that sat out. A major influx of very good shooters and good scores. And the, the other thing, they had the advantage of practicing with the team last year. So all those kids that transferred, they had to sit out, but they were practicing with the team all last year and got very familiar with Janini's system. Foul on Livingston, his second. So sit here for the final minute of the half. A rare rest for Livingston. Who the sixth in the Atlantic 10, averaging about 35 minutes per game. Schuler at the line. Came off the bench with a couple of big threes against him. And the kid out of Roosevelt High School here in the D.C. area. Had an early three. Jenkins. Oh! Going strong, wave it off. Foul on the floor before the shot. Foul is going it's going to be the third on Demetrius Henry. And this is a point of emphasis right here. You're not supposed to impede with your hands. The person either cutting through the lane or driving to the basket. Henry ends up picking his third, picking up his third foul, and he's not too happy with the fact that he picked up his third foul. But I thought that was a relatively easy call. Something that they practice in the pregame. You were remarking yeah. doing a drill holding towels. Holding towels to, to, to build the habit of not hand checking because that's a point of emphasis this year. And it's the first time I've seen somebody do that. Well, not that time. The arm was out. Now a call against Mason. That's on Marquise Moore, his first, who will walk to the other end. As the Explorers will get a chance to use one of their strengths and that's shoot from the free throw line. Tony Washington. Washington at the line. Again, as a team, 78%. Washington, not one of the strongest guys, but he'll make the first and get a set as he gets the front end of the one and one. 18 points per game from the free throw line. That's a huge number. No question. And that's one of the reasons why they're leading the league in scoring. They knock down uh, free throws. They're capable of drawing fouls on the other team. A bunch of guys that can drive to the basket. And a bunch of scores that you got to get close to. And you've got to press up on people. You end up picking up some fouls, which is what people have done against the South. More. Knocks out by Price that time. A good defense on Moore. They, they kept him out of the lane in that possession. Good defense by the South. Shot clock turned off. Explorers can hold here if they desire for the final week of the half. Stooks for Price. Two left. Hoisting the straightaway three. No. And George Mason with an explosion here in the first half. In has 11, Prayer chipping in 10. We get a bit short-handed at Dave Paulson talked about with some player suspensions. Patriots still strolling along here with a double-digit lead. Both teams with the same starting lineup here in the second half. LaSalle has got to pick it up defensively. Too many, too many layups, too many open three-point shots. Mason doing a good job of moving the ball, but LaSalle's got to do a better job defensively to get back in his basketball game. John Giannini talked that they would switch Lester on defense today because they're concerned with Livingston and Moore. But Patriots, two top threats. The guard spots carved them up. And Grayer doing that is another problem for LaSalle. And Livingston froze. Cleon Roberts, who was guarding, uh, excuse me, guarding Grayer that possession. Cleon Roberts was a step slow there. Grayer knocked down the three-point shot. He's really improved his three-point shooting this season. Good work for Tony Washington in the lane to get two back for the Explorers. Grayer certainly has. He's had 16 points four times so far in conference play. Conference play now 10 or more points in eight of the 10 Atlantic 10 games so far for the Patriots with his 13 so far tonight. Jenkins double. What a spot. Morrell had a block. Get it back. Threw it up and he'll shoot a couple. And he dropped that ball. He talked about dropping dimes. He dropped that ball right on the floor to Morrell. Morrell caught it, ended up creating the foul in the contact. Morrell, excellent free throw shooter.
Jenkins a blind pass right there right in the lane. Morrell did a good job of corralling the block shot right there. Morrell is a very good free throw shooter not someone the Sal wants to put on the line too much in this game. And that's a big foul on Demetrius Henry. That is his fourth here less than 90 seconds into the second half. So he'll sit right away. Saul Fury. Originally from Massachusetts, out of Putnam Science Academy in Philadelphia, comes back in. And Jason, we talked about whether or not Mason would have to go big to counter Henry and Washington. Washington, or is LaSalle going to have to go small? And that's the first substitution where LaSalle didn't put in a big guy for a big, put in Fury right there. So they basically have four perimeter players around Washington. We talked about that a little bit first half. Big used to win. You know, bigs used to <laughs> win in your place. Now small ball is the thing. That three point line has changed everything. Along with the former head coach at Georgetown, Greg Estrick, Jason Apps. And this one tonight to the Atlantic 10. Sweet take from Brendan Price, able to lay in too. And Marquise Moore has done a pretty good job defensively against Price, but you got to honor his three point shot, which is why Moore was all the way out on in that possession. And when you're all the way out on somebody, it makes it easier to drive to the basket. Jenkins has the ability to hit the 17 footer and does. Seven now for the redshirt senior. Washington sends it back out deep. Roberts stroked a couple of threes early, but not that time. Moore on the drive. Offensive foul. I really think he traveled before he made contact with LaSalle's defender. I thought LaSalle's defender was there in time, and I didn't think it was a bad call, but I thought Moore traveled before he made contact. Either way, possession going to the Explorers. It was the second foul on Marquise Moore. Price styles it in deep. And again, good defense. LaSalle sets a ball screen. Moore pops out. Had a hand in his face, but Price can make tough shots. Each team with seven hits from distance. Jenkins. Baseline pull up. Why not? Jump shot got good to him. I think next time out, he's going to go to Dave Pulse and say, can I take three-point shots now? Speaking of three, LaSalle striking from deep, saw Fury, his fourth three of the season. And that was just bad defense by Mason that possession. Can't leave somebody that wide open. John Giannini thought that maybe Fury would have an influence on this game. And he does come up with a big three. Nice cut of the baseline from Brayer. But taken away by the Explorer. A really nice pass by Jenkins, but Roberts did a great job of going up there and taking away the layup. Legal screen called on Washington. So Washington now has three fouls. So the two digs for the Explorers with four and three fouls respectively, Henry and Washington. They may be forced to go small the rest of the way no, they because could. of that. No question, they very well could be. And Thomas by the normal rotation for George Mason, who's Jenkins at 6 7. More. Knifing through the fence. And he did a great job of seeking contact, which prevented Washington from going up to block the block shot, got the contact, and then finished in the lane. Battle for the board. Fury going to get called for the contact. Marquise Moore, 16 points, and again, fighting away. So contact right there, and again, he's got Washington at a disadvantage, number one, because he's so quick, but number two, Washington did not want to pick up his fourth foul, that possession. Six of eight shooting for Marquise Moore. Grayer in deep, lost the handle. Roberts. In rhythm three, his third. Night. Now he is someone you cannot leave open. Dave Paulson is talking right now to Otis Livingston. 
the best three-point shooter in the league. You can't leave open behind the three-point line, and Mason did that possession, didn't find him, and Roberts makes him pass. Started his career at Georgia Southern. Now doing big things for the Explorers. Another turnover against Dave Paulson's team. Back-to-back -back possession. Mason, though, still on top here. Second half at home for the United States in the 4 by 400 relay in Rio. Getting a little honor. Basketball and ovation from the crowd. George Mason right now looking like they're going to race past LaSalle with the Explorers not going away. The shooting from the outside starting to heat up. And LaSalle, obviously, a very good shooting team. Mason's got to look, get that defense lined up to where it was in the second part of the first half. Picked up a couple of easy baskets and a couple of tough shots by Jordan Price, but that last three-point shot by Cleon Roberts was just too easy. Big spot for the Patriots. Marquise Moore picks up his third foul with 15-10 left to go. Dave Paulson immediately sending Cameron Morrell into the game. On the inbounds play, Price had a pretty good look at three, battling for the board. And a foul. Fury got pushed. On Morrell, that's his third. Mason can ill afford some foul issues tonight. And Kamari Newman, Danny Dixon, Ian Boyd, unavailable. Three game team suspensions for a violation of team rules. And Dave Paulson juggling things. So far, so good for the home side. Better defense at last possession. possession. Jair Graham did a good job of helping out to get his fingertip on that ball when Washington put the ball up on the back. Livingston bobbled, regathered. Ten left to shoot. Morrell trying to get it to Jenkins. Scoop hoop, no. Solid defense from Tony Washington. Theory dumped out. Washington little twist for two. Really nice pass by Fury in the post. He recognized that Washington was in deep. Jenkins. Mistake was giving him too much space too close to the basket. Washington ended up finishing at the rim. 8 2 surge here for the Explorers to cut it to a seven point deficit. Turnover. Mason. Washington over Jenkins. And Jalen Jenkins may be called for going over the back. The second on Jalen Jenkins. Daniel Roval will re enter to spell Jenkins for the moment. I thought Roval gave him something in the first half. You don't want Jenkins to pick up his third. Four minutes, two points for Roval in that first half. Off balance for Price hit the deck hard. Morel Val, the Patriots can't save him. Nobody around Ravas lost the ball. So new shot clock here for the Explorers. LaSalle, nine threes in the game. Putting a trio to start out here. Early second half to make a push back against George Mason. Explorers at one time led by 11. Mason answered with a 15 0 run. Rebound from Jair Gray. Mason's got to get a good one here. We've got plenty of time in this basketball game, but they haven't scored in a while. Livingston, as usual, is the person to put in. And when you want a good one, Otis Livingston is the one you want to put the ball in his hands, can knock down threes, drive to the basket, and create for his teammates, too. He did it a handful of times in the double over overtime thriller in St. Louis the other night. Does it again that last trip down the floor. Livingston again going with gusto. Dave Paulson, Craig talks about he's worked relentlessly to be a good player. He wants to be great. He's on the road to great. He's no, no really vastly improved. No question about it. He came here, obviously somebody that decent passer, good ball handler. I think he's improved his shooting. Moved his range further. 
away from the basket and he's also improved his judgment too. Obviously freshman year you're adjusting to college basketball the strength and the intensity that you need to play in this very tough league the Atlantic 10 and he's improved every game and much better player this year than he was last year. You see Dave Paulson and the coaching staff there tonight. You notice something a little different. Tie for Coach Paulson. Said he's worn green every game as the head coach and George Mason, but blue tonight. Not for the Sal as Fury gets fouled on the way. You see Paulson, the rest of the coaching staff, the blue ties and the puzzle pins all supporting autism speaks this weekend around college basketball. Towson head coach Pat Scurry and TCU assistant Tom Perry and two popular guys both have the children dealing with autism so big awareness push this weekend so coach Paulson breaking from tradition going blue with the rest of the staff tonight. He may wear blue ties a lot the way they're shooting the basketball. And certainly has special meaning to him one of coach Paulson's brothers has a child on the autism spectrum so great awareness for that cause throughout the weekend here in college hoops. Empty trip for the sack. Livingston kick. Kyer going. And the reach in foul coming on Johnny Schuler. And Livingston created the space that possession. He penetrated. The defense had to come to him. When the defense came to him, they ended up having to run out quick to Kyer, which enables the guy to drive to the basket. Great offs by Mason and good creativity by Otis Livingston. Livingston tried to inbound it. And it deflected quickly away. Different side. Non conference, George Mason, that nine game winning wave. And you get into conference, no consecutive wins or losses. Started with a loss, and then they've seesawed back and forth. So if you're following the trend, they lost the last one Wednesday. It would be time for a win. They also look at it. String some W's together, but they need this one first. Morell back for Livingston. Bodies on the deck in the paint. Five left on it. Morell struggled to find his form shooting, but will stay here. Foul against LaSalle, battling for the loose ball. Explorers on the road trailing George Mason by 11. Points and the whole team is shooting the ball better from the three point line as well. Handful of things go into that. You heard Dave Paulson talking about, especially in this game, guys giving up a good shot for a great shot, but understanding the system more in year two and just a ton of shooting we saw before this game a lot of guys out here multiple hours before just getting in some more shots as Jenkins goes strong one more time Dane Fisher Aaron Kelly Dwayne Simpkins the coaching staff Bryson Johnson the graduate manager as well a lot of good shooting guys on that they're working tirelessly on those individual got, drills got a lot of shots up and we had him earlier in the season where a few of the freshmen did not shoot the ball well and Dave assured us that he thought his team was going to be a good shooting team this season. And they definitely a much better shooting team both from two point range and three point range this season. It's funny, you get some coaches in different sports that say you are what you are, but at some point you've got to have the ability to kind of grow and you can seek growth spurts from this group. And, and no question about it, and I think some of it is kids are more used to playing against this level. That's one. Number two, they're working a little bit more on their shooting. I'm not certain that any of them have improved their mechanics as much as that they're more comfortable. They know what a good shot is, what a bad shot is now. They're very unselfish team. They do a really good job of passing the basketball. Scram there on the Mason turnover. Except for that possession. Yes. Explores going hard. Schuler attacking and will be rewarded with some free throws. Fallon Rayer, that's his second. Team six on George Mason. Already seven on LaSalle. So free throw, free throws will be part of the storyline the rest of the way. So we talked about which team is going to have to make an adjustment. Well, clearly LaSalle now they got five perimeter players in the game, Jason. The biggest player they have right now is Cleon Robertson. He's really a 
Small forward or shooting guard. Fuller, one of two that trip, averages about two points per game, has five on his return trip to D.C. this season. Only the fourth meeting all time between these schools since Mason joined the Atlantic 10. Patriots won the first two, Explorers won last year, 76-68 in Philly. Four on the timer, Moore. Rebound follow from Graham. And Cleon Roberts is looking at Jordan Price, and Jordan Price is looking at Cleon Roberts, and one of them screwed up because Jair Grayer was wide open for that tip dunk. Mason able to clear it. Moore. Short of the shot, can't get the ball. Three on the way, and that is good. Johnny Schuler is feeling it. Bad transition defense by Mason that possession. Nobody picked up Schuler. You cannot leave LaSalle. You can't leave any of LaSalle's players they have in the game right now open because all five of them can knock down three point shots. Livingston, Fury on the closeout. Bang into the shooter. Well, even you could have still maybe gotten up and get this one. Nobody blocking you out. I think so. I don't know if I'd have been able to dunk it, but I certainly could have tipped it in. There was nobody home nobody on that anywhere side. Anywhere near him, Jason. I don't know what happened that possession. Big smiles to the Patriots. It's Grayer. Got a freebie for the flush and did not miss. Livingston. Almost automatic line. Leads the Atlantic 10. Close to 90%. Hit a school record 34 straight at one point this year. Two biggies there to get it back to a 10-point lead. Fury no good on the three. Offensive board, LaSalle. Good hustle by LaSalle on that play. Stewart did a really good job. Stoops did a really good job of getting that ball back into play. Price going to the goal. The contact with Grayer. It's the third on the sophomore from Flint, Michigan. Speaking of guys for Team USA with David Verberg in the house tonight. Grayer's dad, Jeff, great Olympian for Team USA back in 1988. Terrific career at Iowa State and in the NBA. And a fine young man, too. Kind of cool looking at the gold medal up close, but yeah, no, no question, no question. Price is 15. The Mason lead at eight. About nine and a half left to go. And two teams trying to work their way into the conversation down the stretch in the regular season in the Atlantic 10. Both not on the radar screen as Moore traveled and turns it over at the start of the year. LaSalle picked to finish seventh in the Atlantic 10. Dave Paulson and the Patriots 12th. Both maybe exceeding expectations early on. And both, we've seen the reasons why they're doing it. LaSalle, terrific shooting team. And another three falls, double figures and triples in the game for the Explorers as they make a push. And Stoops, not known for his three-point shooting, has already made two in this basketball game. More of a two-point shooter. Shoots very well from the two-point area of the floor. Jenkins in traffic. Foul before the shot. And that's the advantage for their team right now. When LaSalle's going with that small lineup, Jalen Jenkins has got to get touches. He's got the size advantage in terms of height, and he's much stronger than Cleon Roberts, too, in the post. Mason took advantage of it. Smart play getting him the ball. 6 7, largest guy on the floor. Jenkins sticks the first. You think that's comfortable, that, that look? <laughs> Uh, Jason, I said something to you early in the game. I don't know what it would be.
to get me to don one of those outfits. Oh, but I gotta we're going to have to try to find out. I got to give these guys credit for their, their school spirit. No question about it. They were feeling good when that lead was as many as 15. A little calmer in the spandex momentarily with the Explorers. Kind of probing their way here in the second half. Price and one. You can understand why NBA scouts are coming to the Explorers practices. No, no question about it. Both, both Price and B. Jensen, who's not playing this basketball game, the NBA has expressed an interest in. And Price at 6'5", he's got three-point range. He can handle the basketball and obviously finish in traffic. He's some average double figures almost his entire career at LaSalle. And the NBA is looking for people that can score, and Jordan Price definitely can score, and so can B.J. Johnson. Five-point game. Moore can't change it. Grayer, though, in position to collect it and fouled by Shuler. At least his third offensive rebound. Someone's got to pay attention to Jair Grayer. Keith Moore drove to the basket. Did a good job of putting that ball up there, and Grayer again following the shot. Ended up being boxed out too late, which created the foul. Mayor with the first. Make it a perfect pair from the line. 17 for the junior. Averages about 10 and a half per game. Schuler in attack mode. Nixon fans thought it was a clean strip, but he will get a couple of free throws. LaSalle's got four guys in the game right now that can drive to the basket. And I, th I thought he did hit him on the wrist. I thought it was a good call by the official right Clearly on the left wrist, and the fans would not have been able to see that play like we did. But that was a good call by the official. You got to play the game differently now if you're George Mason. You got a scatter report where you had two big guys in the lineup. Now they've taken all the big guys out of the lineup. You got to guard people on the perimeter, and you also got to give help because they got a bunch of guys that can drive to the basket. Dave Paulson's team averaging about 75 points a game, already at 70 with a bundle of time left. One of the best shooting nights of the season for the Patriots. LaSalle continuing to claw back. Livingston, pick and roll. Jenkins plays it in. Yeah. Very patient offense that time. Jenkins did a good job of rolling to the basket, made a good, strong catch. Didn't go right to the basket, created some space with a little pump fake right there. And speaking of creating space, Price gets all the way to the rim but ends up missing the shot. A strong rebound by Jair Grayer. A three hopper off the rim that didn't fall for Jordan Price. Grayer from the baseline. Kyer! Nice, uh, really nice cut. The South fell asleep. Grayer got double teamed. Kyer ends up cutting from the weak side. Real good job of finishing the play in the lane, too. Kyer bit under the weather. Still has given the Patriots what he can. Five points. Henry with the four fouls. Two straight the window. Livingston. A cutting more down the lane. Price wanted the held basketball, but the foul coming up. Jalen Jenkins, primary post for the Patriots, doing his thing in his area in the paint. Side help because they got a lot of guys that can create and drive to the basket. Well, while we're in commercial, officials came over and told us John Janini picked up a technical foul in that last kind of discussion, maybe with the officials as we went to break. So technical foul. So free throws for that, and then the foul coming. So chance here for a big swing. And the leading free throw shooter, the conference, is the one designated, as you would expect, to shoot the freebies on the tech. And Livingston gets the two. 
Now the fouls on the foul to Moore as he drove down the lane. You look at a perfect night for Otis Livingston. Pretty amazing. Five of five from the floor, including all three threes. Six of six from the stripe. He continues to really sparkle in conference play. Career high 29 in the double overtime loss at St. Louis midweek. Now Moore makes it three consecutive free throws for the Patriots. If I had to guess what John was mad at, he was mad at that last possession. When Jalen Jenkins was guarding Henry in the post and Henry didn't draw a foul on Jenkins, there was contact. And then there was contact down here on Marquise Moore. And what John probably said to the referee is, I want the same contact called at both ends of the floor. And the referee probably didn't like how he asked him, Can you call it the same at both ends of the floor? Thus, the technical foul. Livingston questions that one, his third foul. She's saying he reached in on Roberts, who will be at the free throw line. That's a big swing in the game, Craig. If you're LaSalle, you don't get two at the one end, and then the Patriots get four the other way. No question, no question at all. Second on the way for Roberts, and that's good. And even though Henry is in the game and the matchup is a little bit uh, better for LaSalle, Henry still has four fouls, so I'd still try and go into Jenkins in the post. He's going to have to be worried about picking up his fifth. Grayer to the paint. Trying to feather it underneath for Kyer, who got it. Five left to shoot. The lob for Jenkins. Doubled. Now single coverage and gets it. Jenkins did a really good job of gathering the pass and, and going through contact. Henry was very close to getting the call for his fifth foul on that possession, but I thought it was good defense by Henry. I didn't think he fouled. Boy, Price, tough fadeaway, gets the friendly fall. Jordan Price now with 19 to guide the way for the Explorers. Sal has a lot of guys that can put the ball in the basket. Mason's got to pay attention and keep their concentration at the defensive end. They got an 11-point lead, but that 11-point lead can evaporate when you're playing against a team that can shoot the ball as well as the Sal can. Player having a super shooting night. That's a two, but give him a team high 19. Rayer is 7 of 10 from the floor tonight. Price going to the hoop one more time, and he'll get back to the free throw line as well. And I think that foul was called on Kyer, which is a good thing because that would have been Grayer's fifth, uh, excuse me, fourth foul. And Grayer was the was guarding Price, but Kyer came over to help out and picked up his third foul. That is. The third foul on Kyer and Grayer's 19, a season high. Price with 21 for LaSalle. Still double figure advantage here for the Patriots. Super shooting night for both teams. And now Grayer just a little too strong. Thought that Jenkins was going to a spot that should not make. And, and Jason Jenkins should have rolled to the basket. That entire space was open. He was leading him to the basket. It was a bad pass, but I thought Jenkins had plenty of space there to roll the basket and get a layup. What a pull by Kyle. Took it away from Fury, but fought it right back to LaSalle. Stoke. Mar Stukes, tough one in the lane goes. Sal is doing a very good job of attacking Mason in the lane. They're not doing a lot of ball movement. They're just trying to go right to the basket and either create the contact and draw fouls or go to the basket and score. Dozen now for Mar Stukes. Moore, his second triple of the game. He only had one all year, and Marquise Moore doing whatever is required for Mason. Leading rebound.
Mason today. Moore leading the way with 21. Grayer. Notice Livingston in the second with 19 apiece. Jenkins with 16. The bulk of the load from that four. Price. Patriots ball. Wild miss. And Price is asking for a foul. I didn't think anything was anybody was near him. I'd love to see that call and see the play again to see whether or not he's saying somebody from Mason hit his elbow and that's why he shot that air ball. He's a terrific scorer, approaching top 20 all time, and scoring the LaSalle. Only three seasons, freshman year at Auburn for transferring to Philadelphia. Offensive foul on Jenkins. That's his third. Media timeout here, final one of regulation. Jenkins getting the clarification, his team leads. Mason looking to get to 500 in conference play and get a 15th win on the year. Sal, they can rally, would improve to seven and three in league play. Right now, Marquise Moore, the Patriots, keeping the Explorers at bay. Three hoisted quickly from Fear. Bound for Kyle. And that was a set play by John Giannini. New, knows he's got to score and score quickly. Did a good job of a quick cut and a quick three-point shot. And Mason did a really good job of boxing out to get the rebound. As you would expect, number one team in rebound margin in the league. And plus 6.3. It's plus 11 in this game. And Moore continues to punish the explorer. When he gets in the lane, he is really tough. Did a really good job of spinning. And that spin created the space. Here, Johnny Schuler ends up stepping out. Ball back to George Mason with a 14 point lead with 3.03 to go in the game. Just the ninth turnover on the Explorers. But they've kind of come in big spots, Craig. Remember, there was a series of travels there no, no in the first about. half that kind of really stymied that early run. And now a couple here in crunch time. More attacking again. Stukes. May have poked it out from behind. Price, they need one, can't get one. Lift it. Two on one. Player had it poked away. Stukes, though, stepped out of bounds after he got it. LaSalle did a really good job of hustling back defensively. Livingston ended up stealing that. Grayer was open on the wing, but he was only open for a little bit because LaSalle did a great job of hustling back and taking away the layup. You're Mason, you don't have to shoot the ball quickly. You got plenty of time on that shot clock right now. Why not try and milk the clock, which is what they look like they're trying to do here. Got a 14 point lead right now. LaSalle is the one that's got to score in that year. The explorer is not in foul mode at this point. They'll play it out, look for a stop. Moore lays in two more. Amazing, Jason, how he can finish at the rim, and he can finish at the rim with contact. And wasn't able to assist his mates in the double overtime loss under the weather for the majority of the game. The boy has assisted them tonight. 25 for Marquise Moore. And this crowd an appreciation here as they put the clamps on the Explorers the last three minutes or so. And are working on another big W here in conference. His fourth triple of the night. And that space that Grayer got to take that shot was created by Marquise Moore. He takes so much attention away from the defenders. Grayer had all day to take that three point shot. Lamar Stukes still pushing. That snap the 10 0 run. That bucket from the Redshirt Junior for the Explorers. And now George Mason going to celebrate this. And this is a. 
big win. Any win in conference is big. But Dave Paulson, again, player suspensions for three guys, two of them rotation players. They'll sit out three games. As Moore rattles down his third three of the game. I think they're looking to see whether or not that was a three point shot or not. Either way, it's a key bucket. But Dave Paulson has his standards setting them, even though it could be detrimental to the depth of his team. The rest of his guys really responded to it. No question. I thought they played it hard. Other than a little lapse early on in the game, they went that zone and gave up too many open three point shots. Dave called timeout, made a quick adjustment. They played mostly man the rest of the basketball game. And their defense was very good, and their offense was even better tonight. Career high 28 for Marquise Moore. George Mason going to celebrate a 20 point win here against LaSalle. Explorers without Pookie Powell for the fourth straight game. PJ Johnson for the first time after he went down in practice with an ankle injury. Not sure how long either will be out as Moore bids for another. Uh, when healthy, the Explorers have been a tough team to beat in the Atlantic 10, but they fall for the fourth time in the last five games. And the Patriots get to 500 in league play. 13 2 end of the game for Dave Paulson's squad. A 20 point victory thanks to a career high 28 from Marquise Moore. And the core group of starters do it again for the Patriots and guys like